morning, Mikhail. Morning. Can I ask you, first of all, what is the hold-up with a deal for Mikhail Marino? And is it very frustrating it hasn't happened yet? No, and you know that I cannot talk about <laughs> any play that, uh, that is not with us. Uh, there is still time in the market, uh, both ways, <laughs> for all the managers, for all the teams here, and, and you can tell how busy it's getting. Can we assume it's something that is going to happen soon? I don't assume. Uh, the full focus is on the plays that we have at the moment, the big match that we have tomorrow against uh, Aston Villa, and that's where we're at. I, I think I'm going to get some more answer, but I'm going to ask about Eddie and Katia leaving the club as well, and there's interest from Nottingham Forest. Do you expect Eddie to go over there? I expect Eddie to train with us today to be prepared for tomorrow, and, and that's it. And whatever happens, it will happen um, if it's good for everybody. Uh, moving on, I, I, I assume you, you've always had belief, but when you look at the squad now, do you see belief that maybe wasn't there two years ago? It's a bit of a surprise, Arsenal were in the title race two years ago, you obviously got a lot closer last season. When you look at your players now, do you sense that they feel it's their time? I always had a feeling and belief in our players that we have to trust them, I have to trust them, you know. That's the only way to get the best out of your team, out of your individuals, and uh, we always have them. It's to achieve one level, that's something else, you know. But uh, obviously we know what we want, uh, and it's not another thing that perform at the highest level every game to end the right to win it. And tomorrow is no difference, it's the second game, and this is what we're going to do. And obviously, Aston Villa were the only team to beat you twice last season. What was it that they did particularly well against you or that you couldn't work out against them? Well, they scored and we didn't, very simple. Uh, in two games, even though we had an enormous amount of chances to do that. And, and that was one of the big differences. There are all the details, for sure, that we have analysed and we have to do better tomorrow. But, uh, yeah, and because they are a really good side, really well coached. What makes them particularly difficult to play against? And they dominate every every aspect of the game, you know. Uh, you give them a space to run, they are phenomenal. When they have no space and they have to find spaces, they're able to do that. Any restart set pieces, they are at it. Uh, that's why they did what they did. Yeah. Just finally for me, four of the Premier League managers now are all Basque. Yeah. What makes Basque? Big so community, yeah. yeah. I mean, 20% of the Premier League managers are, are Go to San Sebastian and then come back and then ask me that question. You all have to go there because it's a beautiful place, beautiful great city, restaurants. great restaurant, great food, great culture. Uh, what makes yeah. you such good football managers there? Probably the passion and the education that we all got. And then, yeah, we all need opportunities and chances, someone has to believe in you. I think uh, what Unai and Julian did for us is incredible because they set the standards so high, they won a lot. The way they coached the team, the way they represented the clubs, it was in the at the highest level. So I think that gave a platform for the youngest one like myself, like Xavi, like Andoni, probably to end that curiosity, say, OK, maybe there are coaches here as well. So I think we have to be very grateful for to those two. Do you and Andoni and Julian and I have a WhatsApp group or anything? No, we don't. Let's go. Thank you. Okay, Sarah so from KLP. Hello. Hello. Um, Timber replaced Zinchenko against Wolves for a short time and he really showed what you've been missing. Like aggressive, ball carrier, winning all his duels. With Calafuri added to the squad, can we expect at any point to see him be used as like a midfield alternative as well? Yeah, he is. He can play in various positions. His versatility is one of the biggest a strength, obviously we missed him for 11 months, it's great to have him back, he plays some minutes, quality minutes the other day, like Alex did as well, but I think Alex was really good as well, uh, especially in the first 60 minutes against Wolves, and uh, having that capacity in the squad to turn things around and, and find other things that the team is needing at that moment, I think is something very valuable. Players have spoken a lot about how effective you've been in getting the team in the right state of mind, they said this pre-season felt very different mentally as well. How has it been for you mentally as a coach to go through these seasons, develop the project, develop the squad and keep everyone resilient and yourself ready? It's great. It gives you so much energy. In our jobs, every day is something new, uh, someone you want to unveil and, and try. Uh, the players give you so much information, so much to think about. And we have a staff, yeah, they're all curious, they all want to get better, they all want to evolve and, um, and this is why transformation happens because everybody is in the same page on that. And Declan Rice, he said his best position is a six, but he loves and gets excited playing as an eight. <laughs> so in his Arsenal career and future, do we expect to see him as both and develop as both, or do you see him as a six? 
I think so. And at his age, I think it would be a big mistake not to do that and not to have the, the capacity to, to, to play in different positions. And then within the game, you will have a different role uh, in relation to the opponent as well and what they do. Uh, and last year, he showed that he has the ability to shift from one game to the other, sometimes in the same game, and to have players like that with the short score that we have is really important. Thank you. Hi. First away game of the season this weekend. No team took more points than Arsenal in the last two seasons away from home. How much confidence can a record like that past performance give the team before going to something like that? That we are, uh, that we've done it. That's the confidence. Now we have to show it again, and uh, and tomorrow we have to go there. Obviously, with with that belief, being very clear what we want to do and and what we have to do to end the right to win the game, and uh, we will certainly try to do that again. Well, the guy Saka is one away from 100 Premier League wins already at the age of 22. I mean, he can break all sorts of records in his Arsenal career. Is that something that you think he's motivated about those numbers and do you use that to, to challenge him? That's a question for him. Obviously, when you look at those numbers, at his age, is is very, very special, especially in the position that he plays. You said a different position that can be more consistent like that, but a rare thing to see and uh, big credit to him. Hi, it's from BBC. Hi, Mikhail. Hi. Uh, Durian came on, Durian Timber came on uh, in the last match. Is he fit enough to start at the weekend and could have a fitness update of the rest of the squad as well, please? Yeah, well, he had a really good precision to a point, and then we had to stop him because he had a little issue there, and, uh, and we didn't believe that he was ready to, to do that. We have to build him up. We have to be cautious with him, so I'm not sure about that. And five players named in the PFA Premier League team mm -hmm. of the year. You travelled to Manchester yeah. to, to see the players get their awards. Do you think it's important to show that support to the, to the squad? Yeah, it was a really proud moment, obviously, for the second year in a row to have... Uh, five players in, in the starting eleven. It's a big thing. So everybody at the club is really proud of them. Really proud of the team. Uh, they are there because all the players as well have contributed for, for them to perform at that level. And, and obviously all the staff that is involved every day to to try to make them better. You've spoken of how the transfer window is open for all the managers. Will you still be looking for players up until the the end of the window? Do you have a number you'd like to bring in? Ah, we have to because uh, anything can happen both ways and you have to be ready. And especially in the last week, uh, you better be alert and, and be prepared because uh, there are a lot of surprises can come uh, for many different reasons and, um, and we are prepared. Hi, Miguel. Hi. When, when you sort of left us in, in the summer, I think everyone thought by this stage, your sort of new contract would be signed and everything. Just for any, any fans who might be concerned that it's not, is there any sort of update? Should they be worried at all that you've, you've not done it yet? Uh, the focus has been on the transfer window, and we had quite a lot of things to do and discuss, and, uh, and we are on it, and, and we, would, we would take care of that in, in the right moment. Is that one of those things when the window's done, you can then sort of sit down and have those, those talks? Yeah. Yeah. Hi, how are you? Hello, good to um, you. How big a test so early in season? Is this game going away? Yeah, one of the toughest places to go for sure, and uh, and we know that, and we prepare really well um, to understand what we have to do, and we will try to go there to win the game for sure. Is it, is it important for you to get one personally over in Ivory? Personally, yeah. I don't take things personally. <laughs> I just have <laughs> the will to win and prepare the team in the best possible manner, regardless uh, who do I play against. We have still got a week of the transfer window. How would you sum it up? Because some clubs you would expect to do maybe a lot of business, like for Arsenal, Man City, Liverpool, we've done none, have been very quiet. And yet other clubs have been really busy. Does that show everyone else needs to catch you up? Well, I think everybody would be in a different position. We knew what we, we wanted to do, what we could do as well, which is important. And you have to put those two things uh, together at the end and then what is available that really can strengthen the, the squad, can make the team better uh, for the short, medium and long term as well, which is important. And another thing is very important is looking at our academy as well, that it has to be looked in the right way because now we have some promising talent coming up there and we have to create a space for those kids um, to start to, to come very close to the first team as well. I'm glad you mentioned that because that was my final question. Is one, of your, one of your star player is Pakai Saka, who's come through Hale Ender Academy. Yet we've seen throughout the summer, if I presume that Eddie Nketiah will leave, him leave Arsenal, Oliver Skip leave Spurs, Conor Gallagher leave Chelsea. It seems clubs are more selling their academy players these days than, than 
promoted him into the first team? I wouldn't differentiate that because Arsenal and any other club has sold all the players. They are part of the squad. You cannot differentiate. They, they, they are getting sold sometimes because the player wants to go, sometimes because the club needs to, because both of them agree that is the best thing to that stage of their career. And as well is that those players have been for a long time at the club, which maybe with foreign players it hasn't happened. So I wouldn't look at it um, that way. I think uh, it is important that when we make a decision, when the players make a decision, we are fully aligned. And in the case of Emil, it was clear he has expressed that desire to play more with what happened in the last two seasons. And it's very understandable, you know, and you cannot stop in a way of somebody that has given you so much. And I know a lot of the focus is what goes on on the pitch and the transfer market, as you just mentioned. I was wondering, um, for you, do you put much importance on the way you communicate information, whether it be in here with us guys or uh, with your team, the players and stuff like that? Yeah, especially not to create more problems. <laughs> uh, it is very important, you know, at the end, uh, I'm here, I'm representing the club, I'm representing that team, those players as well. and. Uh, and you ha guys have to understand what we do. I need to express that in the right manner. I need to understand where you guys are coming from as well. And uh, it is very important every time we are here in front of the media representing the club. It's a, it's a huge thing, obviously. Is that a skill that you've maybe needed to develop over time? And is it different when you're alone with the players? It is, but as a player as well, you have that responsibility. And when they put you the mic straight after the game and, and your heart is still beeping high and full of emotions, uh, it's tricky. And we don't get any education to, to do that. So probably it's trial and error, a lot of error, and then hopefully you will get uh, better. But it's something that uh, is there and we have to live with it. Okay, last couple of last sections. Just on that, Mikel, obviously last season, this fixture at Aston Villa, you were sat in the stands. And mm -hmm. I wonder... How, what are your memories of that and, and did it change? I didn't enjoy it one bit. No, I felt too far. Uh, it's, the, it's the moment that I love the most during the week. You are just building everything to get to that moment, being in the grass next to the player and, and the competition is on your veins. And to be there, it was, it was frustrating. Did it make you think, I have to make sure I'm never... Yeah, there. it's easy, yeah. On that is when you make a mistake, you are there. I should have, yeah, I should have, but it's too late, I should have. But uh, yeah. And also, um, just at Chelsea, Raheem Sterling's been left out of the squad for the past couple of games. Um, you obviously worked with him at Man City. I wondered if there was maybe any temptation to, to give him a call and, and try and convince him to, to come to Arsenal. No, well, I can talk with my time with, with Raheem. That was exceptional. I think we built a, a really strong relationship together. Uh, he was unbelievable at the time that uh, we were together. And, uh, and he taught me a lot as well about uh, the individuals, how the players think, how we give them support and, and help them. And uh, he's someone that I really have a strong feelings about. Obviously, that massive squad Chelsea have got, you had something similar, not on the same scale, but do you sympathise with what Enzo Messi is going through in terms of having to deal with so many players and having players who aren't part of the fold? Is, what are the difficulties of that? And yet, do you sympathise with him for that? I don't know. I'm not in his shoes. Um, He's someone that I really like. Um, the way he coaches, I have some really good things about him. I know him a little bit, and I just wish him the best. He's got a, a beautiful project as well ahead of him, I think, and uh, just wish him the best. James, ESPN. Mikel, you, you said you'll look at the contract sort of next month. Well, you've made I didn't say next month, no? Did you say? Well, when the window is closed, yeah, okay. I'm assuming September. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> Well, you're taking the club such a long way. You, you must be really excited by the idea of where you can go, not just this season, but in the years to come. Mm. I am. I am very grateful, first of all, for where I'm sitting and, and the people that I work with every single day because it's really difficult to find that harmony, that trust, that belief, that same alignment in, in the vision. And, uh, and it's something I always mention, and especially after, because I believe that, uh, that uh, we have an unbelievable still time ahead of us and uh, and he's very excited and I'm very excited about it. You look at obviously Pet at nine years at City, you're going to have a similar time at Liverpool. Is that kind of long longevity of sort of target for you? Do you see yourself here for that kind of time? I see myself today and tomorrow and this is the reality of, of us as, as managers and I think that we have to live with that urgency as well. I think it's something good. It's something that I actually like and, uh, and looking two years time, three years time, 
with yourself, you have to okay plan because it's the club. What is going to happen afterwards? It will depend on how good the results that we get. That's it. That's our reality. In the meantime, do your best and enjoy it if you can.